What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Shonen Showdown. I'm your host, Rob, and since to the right of me is... Gerard, Mr. Controversial. <laughs> <laughs> that is a perfect name for you, because today we're going to be talking about the top five current and former warlords in One Piece. So stay tuned. So we know we know everything about the uh, you know the Shichibukai, um, but we want to talk about who are the top five strongest. If you were at one point in One Piece a warlord, you are being counted on this list. Um, so that counts everybody. That counts Mihawk, Kuma, you know, Bo Hancock, Buggy, the, everybody. Everybody is on this list. Weevil. And we're just talking about them right now in their current state. So not just when they are warlords, but where are they at right now. So the top five strongest. Let's start at number five. Drod, go. I have at my number five. I have Mr. Bear himself, Bartholomew Kuma, at my number five. What? Why are you so disgusted? What? <laughs> Kuma? Kuma? K Kuma? The, the, Kuma? The same Kuma that is that is at the referee right now. Yes. That is yes. The celestial dragon is. Yes, riding around. That, that, that Kuma. That Kuma. <laughs> <laughs> only because... Only because... The only way he... You make me laugh. We're talking yeah. about his fighting prowess, right? In terms of strength, you know? The only way he's like that is because he was brainwashed and like had to give his body to Dr. Degas. I, I, I agree. Yeah. Um, but Kuma, Kuma just fighting prowess. Like, when we saw him at Gekomori's Island, mm -hmm. the whole Thriller Bark arc, we saw this man Kuma was put in work in general. Kuma's elite, but he's not top five. Because we got to consider who's on this list. Yeah. At number five, I'm putting Doflamingo. Um, and I think that, you know, we have to put respect on what Doflamingo was able to do. Mm -hmm. Ple completely put a whole country down on lock and did it better than Crocodile was able to do. Mm -hmm. Had the string string fruit, which he had the ability to awaken his string string fruit, which turned the whole country into strings. Okay? At the same time, the man can make clones. The man can control other people like he did to Bellamy. And yes. oh, let's not forget that he can even heat up the strings so they have more attack power. His, his, his you know, Conqueror's Hockey is elite. His Armament Hockey is elite. You know, he has elite royal blood within his body. Doflamingo is crazy. Right now, honestly, I, I just think, you know, the levels that Law and Luffy had to reach just to be able to, you know, encounter him and then beat him. We all know that Trable is there assisting as well, but Doflamingo was one of the hardest opponents that Luffy had has ever had to face. I totally agree. With you. Um, so when I'm looking at it like that, I gotta put I gotta put Doflamingo at number five. Yeah, I totally agree with you. All the same as all the same as he said were complete facts. That's why I have him as my number four. Okay, <laughs> that's okay. why I have him on number wow. four on the list. Because okay. Doflamingo, as we said, is probably the best villain we've seen in One Piece in general mm -hmm. in terms of his strength, like. He's sick and he gets the job done, even though it may not be the best job to right. us, you know. This man is like, he's a beast among men, you know. The heavenly devil, as they call him. His athlete is ridiculous. His speed, his use of strings and his creativeness is mm -hmm. like out of this world. That's why I put him out number four as terms of like strongest. It's even said that if Doflamingo were to lead the warlords, they would have to send admirals, the whole marines to like come and stop yeah, this man. Yeah. His strength was recognized world. Why? The world government recognizes strength. That's why I feel like He's number four on my list. Okay. I, I, I Listen, I, I respect that. And I'm going to put Traffic Guard Law at number four. Traffic I'm putting him over Doflamingo. Yes, everybody may be shocked, but we're talking mm -hmm. about the characters right now in within the series as yeah. of the recent episode. And I do think that Law has gotten stronger since Dressrosa. Also, I do think that Law in Dressrosa was putting in a lot of work. And at the same time, there were multiple instances where he had an upper hand on Doflamingo in their encounters. Now, Doflamingo sometimes flipped the script back on Law, but we know how powerful and how potent Law's room ability is. Shambles, able to teleport, you know, tact, able to levitate, levitate things. Gamma Knife, once it enters your body, your internal organs are being destroyed by the second. Right? These are things that Law is built like an assassin. Oh, and by the way, he can heal himself, right? Because he is a surgeon. So, when we look at it like that, I gotta put Law at number four. Who do you have sitting at number three? At number three, this is a hard one. Ah, can we have ties for number three? We can't have any ties. No ties? Okay. No ties whatsoever. Okay. And then, for oh. number three, ooh, this is gonna be... I have to do this. For number three, I'm gonna have to put 
my son Jimbe, Jimbe at number three. Okay. Number three, Jimbe. I agree. We've seen this man. I agree. He, when he was a warlord, we've seen this man wreck. Ever since we saw him introduce One Piece, he's never been taken, he's never been sorry, plain and simple. Right. He's always been up at the forefront. His fishman karate is of the top of the top. Recently, we've seen him even punch Big Mom off the ship. Even though she was in a whole like hunger craze and everything, this man is like, he's definitely top fighter in One Piece that I've seen, and definitely deserves a number three spot for Warlord in general. I, I listen, I agree. Vagamon Jill able to you know hold off Big Mom when she was in an angered state, um, helped Luffy escape Impel Down, helped mm-hmm. Luffy escape Marine Fort, and also helped Luffy get out of his mental state. We know that Jinbei is you know a powerful, powerful. Uh, fighter, but he's also a powerful, powerful supporter mentally for yes. many pirates. He's a battle hardened he warrior. He, just he's, he's just elite. Took mm-hmm. a hit from Akainu and still came out booming the next day. I mean, Jinbei is just elite. He's strong willed, he's super powerful. Fishman Karate is nothing to sneeze at because we mm-hmm. all know it's kind of like a poor man's army hockey where exactly. it can also stop Devil Fruits. So, looking at Jinbei, I have to put Jinbei at number three. Who sits at number two? Number two. We have to put the greatest swordsman currently, Jack yeah. Mihawk, has to sit at number two. Yeah. As we've seen, nobody's touching this man. <laughs> Everybody is. This man doesn't need a crew. He roams by himself on his little boat. He does his own thing, keeps himself for the most part. And he just cares about being the world's strongest swordsman. And we've seen him exemplify and live up to the name. I have never once doubted that he was the world's strongest swordsman exactly. ever in the whole series. And it's hard for me to ever doubt it in the future of the series until I see something of like metal or someone even come up to the Well, plate. Shanks was close. Shanks was close. I'm not but gonna Mihawk is number one. Yeah, I'm not gonna uh-huh. undermine Shanks. Right. Definitely close, but as of right now, Mihawk is still number one swordsman in right. One Piece and there deserves a spot at number two. Right. Um, I completely agree with you. Mihawk, black blade wielder, um, able to train and spar with Shanks at elite levels. Um, we we've seen him, you know, slice ships in half with ease. You know what I mean? Like Mihawk's skill level is ridiculous. He's the reason why Zoro is being thrown into conversations with the top swordsman right now because he actually trained Zoro and taught him hockey. So we know this. We know how powerful he is. So we have to put him at number two. Now, who sits at number one? Number one, I guess. We have to give it to this guy, <laughs> Mr. Teach himself, Marshall D. Teach. Well, I'm shocked you didn't say Edward Weaver, but you're, <laughs> you, I mean, wow. This one was oh, kind of yeah, clear it, cut. It was. We have the Dark Fruit and we have the Rumble Rumble, you know. We have two, like, the most, like, strongest fruits in the One Piece of the now in one person, in one body. And it's, like, hard to match that in general. We have a fruit that can nullify all Devil Fruit abilities. And then we have another fruit that can literally call tsunamis and make the whole world shake. Right. We've seen the damage Whitebeard did to Marineford in general. So like, we know the power he can do. And Teach himself beat Ace. And so we see the power in like, the ability to nullify Devil Fruit that the Dark Dark Fruit has. And it's hard to like, not put him at number one with right. like a world run by Devil Fruit. The most and not just Ace. He also beat Marco yes. and the boys yeah, and the rest did. of the Whitebeard Pirates. Um, yeah, so I obviously have Blackbeard at number one as well for reasons you just stated. Mm-hmm. You know, went into the Marine Ford War, completely stole the show, and then yeah. just left like it was nothing. Um, I mean, you know, Blackbeard is elite. He definitely, you know, when we're talking about the Shichibukai, um, he definitely is the strongest that has ever been named a Shichibukai, strictly because now he has Whitebeard's Devil Fruit accompanied with his Yami Yami. So, with that, you guys let us know who are the top five warlords of all time. And uh, with that, we're signing out. Signing out.